It's marathon day. The thermometer reads 22 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. 24 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. 26 degrees Celsius, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity is 80%. It's a hot race. At mile 22, 35 kilometers, you see images of the apocalypse. Runners stuck. Runners walking. Runners collapsed with cramps, nausea, dizziness. And you notice something strange. Most of the spectacular blow-ups are the good runners, the ones chasing 345, 400, 410. Hours later, you see the 5-hour, 530, 6-hour runners. Yes, they're tired. Yes, they're in pain. But they finish upright. Smiling, you don't see the same biochemical collapse. And the question is logical, and we've all heard it. But how? The 5-plus hour runner was exposed to the heat for more time. How did they survive while the 4-hour runner blew up? The answer is simple, but it holds the entire science of the marathon. In a hot, humid race, your number one enemy isn't the distance. It's the intensity, and the war you're losing isn't a war of endurance. It's a war of thermoregulation. Part 1. The quick answer, the diesel engine. Let's get the 5-plus hour runner out of the way first. Why did they seemingly endure? The runner aiming for 5 hours runs at an average pace of 7 minutes and 6 seconds per kilometer, 11 minutes and 25 seconds per mile. This runner is moving at a very low intensity, around 60% to 65% of their VO2 max. Think of their body as a diesel engine. It's incredibly efficient. Because the intensity is low, their engine produces very little internal heat per minute. Yes, the humidity is preventing them from cooling, but the fire inside them is small. Their body can manage the situation. Their core temp rises, but slowly it's manageable. But let's be honest, you're not here for them. You're here to understand what happened to the other guy. You're here to understand what happened to you. Part 2. The deep dive, the turbo, and the broken radiator. Now let's look at the 4-hour runner. Your pace is 5 minutes 41 seconds per kilometer, 9 minutes 9 seconds per mile. You are moving at a high intensity, at 75% to 80% of your VO2 max. Think of your body as a turbo engine. It's powerful, and it is redlining. It produces a massive amount of internal heat per minute. And here is the tragedy. Here is the secret that explains everything. When you run, your body has one radiator, sweat. When sweat evaporates from your skin, it cools you. But in a race with 80% humidity, the air is already full of water vapor. Your sweat cannot evaporate. It just drips. It rolls off you. This means your radiator is broken. So the four-hour runner is facing two enemies at once. A hellfire inside, massive heat production from intensity. A broken radiator outside, zero cooling due to humidity. Your body has no way to get rid of the heat. And then the panic begins, the collapse. Part three, the anatomy of the blow up. What happens inside the four hour runner's body at mile 20, 32 kilometers? Step one, cardiovascular drift your core temperature, red lines. The brain panics. It orders the heart to send massive amounts of blood to the skin. Why? It's a desperate attempt to get the hot blood to the surface to cool off, since the sweat radiator is broken. This has two catastrophic consequences. It steals blood from your muscles. Your muscles, which are screaming for oxygen to hold that 541 per kilometer pace, are suddenly getting less. Your heart rate skyrockets. Your heart has to do double duty. Send blood to the muscles and to the skin. To do this, your heart rate jumps. While at mile 5, you ran 5 minutes 41 seconds per kilometer at 150 beats per minute. Now at mile 20 for the exact same pace, your heart is pounding at 165 or 170 beats per minute. Step 2. 
the threshold collapse, you are already running very close to your thermoregulation threshold. The heat and humidity just pushed you over the edge. Your performance plummets. The 541 kilometers per hour, nine minutes, nine seconds per mile, that was your goal, now requires the effort of a 520 kilometers per hour, eight minutes, 35 seconds per mile pace. It's impossible to hold. Step three, the safety switch. Your body is not stupid. Your brain realizes you are approaching heat stroke. It flips the main breaker. It makes you nauseous dizzy, overwhelmingly exhausted. It shuts down your legs. It's not that you didn't want it enough, it's that your body to protect you forced you to stop. That is why the four hour runner blew up. The five hour runner fought the weather. The four hour runner fought his own boiling over engine. Part four, the battlefields. Athens, Boston, and NYC. This isn't theory, it's the reality we see at the world's biggest races. Athens Marathon, 2023-2021. The authentic marathon is the perfect storm. It has uphills which increase heat production and often high humidity from the sea. The runners who go out aggressively for four hours often blow up spectacularly on Cafesius Avenue precisely because their thermal load exploded. Boston Marathon 2012, known as the Boston Inferno. The temperature hit 31 degrees Celsius, 88 degrees Fahrenheit. What happened? The elites ran plus 10 minutes slower, but it was the fast amateurs, the 3.30 to 4 hour crowd, who collapsed en masse. The organizers warned, don't run for a PR. Those who ignored them failed. New York City Marathon, a race that can be 5 degrees Celsius, 41 degrees Fahrenheit, or 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. On its hot years, we see the exact same pattern. The 4 o'clock to 4.30 runners suffered disproportionately because their intensity is right on the red line of thermoregulation. The summary, heat punishes intensity, not duration. Let's go back to the original question. Why did the five-hour runner survive? Because the five-hour runner and the four-hour runner did not run the same race. Yes, they were on the same course, but one was running a low-intensity event, 60% VO2 max, and the other was running a high-intensity event, 75% VO2 max. A hot and humid marathon does not punish duration. It punishes intensity. The four-hour runners saw their time slow by plus 15 or plus 20 minutes because their bodies braked to prevent heat stroke. The five-hour runners saw maybe plus five or plus 10 minutes because their engine never got to the red line. The strategy. The next time you're on a starting line with 22 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit, and 80% humidity, your pace watch is useless. Your four o'clock goal is a suicide mission. Your only goal is to manage effort. Run by heart rate, not by pace. Start slower than you think, because the runner who blasts past you at mile 5 is the same runner you will be walking past at mile 22. You cannot change the weather, but you can change your engine. Training that raises your VO2 max and your lactate threshold makes that 541 per kilometer pace feel like 65% intensity instead of 80%. It turns you from a turbo into an efficient turbo. This video is the why, but the how, how you build that engine, how you train to make your heart stronger and your VO2 max higher, that is where the real progress is hidden. A generic plan from the internet doesn't know your heart rate zones, your VO2 max, or your personal heat adaptation. If you're ready to stop guessing and want a scientific, personalized plan, built exactly for your goals, the process is simple. Send me an email at jimkuriak at gmail.com with the subject line thermoregulation or training. I will personally see it and we will start building your unique path to your next successful marathon. Let's stop running randomly. Let's start training. Running coach Demetrius MSC in sports science. Your running journey powered by science.